So to summarize part one of the synthesis lecture, we'll just discuss some other contents of the standard cell library very briefly. So we can have all kinds of other files and formats uh, in addition to, to the left and lib as we discussed before. For example, we'll have the GDS files that describe the um, detailed layout. We'll have the Verilog files that will help us run logic simulation. We'll have ATPG or automatic test pattern generation files to run all kinds of design for test type of stuff. Power grid models to help us see if our power grid is working correctly. OA databases to help us uh, connect to Virtuoso or other front end type of design tools. Spice models models which help us run spice simulations etc 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 there may be many more by the time you see this video um, but the one important thing that you have to know uh, is how do you actually navigate through these uh, these libraries which are kind of given in different types of formats and they each have different contents well we want to go and look at the documentation and the data sheets which will be provided hopefully with every library you will meet so um, are we just supposed to look through and see what the vendor decided to provide us with? And the answer is unfortunately, yes, there is no real standard on how a library is provided. You just have to search through, look through and study it a while and um, ask your support to help you uh, give you some additional details. But the PDFs inside will usually describe a lot of the things in the library. And there will also be data sheets that will uh, tell you about each corner. For instance, if, if we want to know what the different standard cells are, are that are supplied, because they may not be very trivial names, sometimes they can have strings of dozens of letters inside, and we want to know what they are, we go into the data sheet and it will show us uh, what's going on. For example, we can see uh, in this data sheet we have a NAND gate, and um, we have over here the symbol of the NAND gate. Um, we can see what uh, what it looks like, and um, we have the truth table of the NAND gate over here, which shows what its functionality is, and then we'll have some electrical parameters, which will show the different sizes and types of NAND gates provided by this library, and different things like the uh, propagation delay that's expected, maybe some sort of function that will kind of show what's in the lib file, maybe leakage and dynamic power, and the sizes of the gate. So all kinds of things like that you can expect to find in your library. And the last point, what about other IPs? So I mentioned it before, we have different IPs such as SRAMs or analog IPs or IO cells or different things that aren't an actual standard cell per se. They're not just a logic gate. They may have uh, much more complex functionality, but they're provided as a type of a hard macro. So when we get an IP, we also get the same exact type of a library as we would get with a standard cell, uh, and it should include most of these views that a standard cell library will have. They're uh, required for integrating the hard macros in the standard design flow. For, in for instance, we'll have to have some sort of behavior behavioral Verilog file that will say uh, what's, what, how the, uh, this different IP is going to um, act, and uh, we'll have to have lib files and so forth. Okay, memories are a special case, and uh, um, we will usually be provided with what's called a memory compiler, where we can choose the sizes of the memory and different types of things. And when we push the button, we'll get a whole set. It will actually generate a library for us that will have all the libs and lefts and GDSs and everything that we need. So that's it for this lecture, and next week we'll discuss... Um, the actual uh, synthesis flow, which is uh, all of these things, the rest of these points here.